Hello, everyone. Welcome back to today's podcast. My name is Brittany Simon. In today's podcast, I took a request from you guys. You've been begging me to talk about friendship, and we've made a few podcasts about this. But in particular, I'm going to deep dive into some of the questions you guys gave me. Now, before we dive totally in, I am drinking a Japan Bancha, which is a green tea. I got it at a local shop here in Croatia, and I have brewing, I've been brewing it wrong this whole time. So today I finally did it correctly. The bag says one to three minutes, but I went on the internet and it actually recommends anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute. So I finally brewed it at a minute, not three, because that's what I kept doing. It was too bitter and literally a thousand times better. We had gone to this Croatian shop and I asked her, I was like, I want like a green tea, something refreshing. And I got this tea and I was like, oh man, I'm never going to buy this again. I was brewing it wrong. It's absolutely delicious and I'm very glad we got it. So I'm going to cool down the remainder of the tea because I probably won't get through that whole teapot behind me here. And then I'll have it for tonight's stream, chilled and iced. So I'm pretty excited about that. Okay, now I've got my notes in front of me and we want to talk about friendship. And I know you guys gave me a bunch of questions and I appreciate that. Please leave me more in the sections down below. The, the reason I love talking about friendships is I think that for me, because I'm such a big fan of anime, friendships are one of the most profound and intimate relationships you can have in a lifetime. Now, for me, I do create a hierarchy of friendship, and this is to create boundaries, right? This is about you. When I'm talking today, we're really not judging other people. We're judging ourselves. What are our expectations of friendships? How are we good friends, right? It's really about us. So everything that I do, I think, in my work is about introspection. So introspection is a relationship with yourself. It's not about other people. Yes, extrospection is a part of it. Yes, we want to always, you know, talk to people and relate to people and reflect about ourselves through people, but we want to make sure this is about us. So what kind of a friend are we? Okay. So one of the first and one of the main questions I want to sort of use is the big umbrella, you know, question that we trickle down and find out the subcategories of questions is how do you know what kind of a friend this person is? How do you know if they're inner circle, outer circle, or inner circle, Sorry, inner outer circle or outer circle. So these are my my little things I've made up for myself. So use whatever language you want. But when Brittany says inner circle, she means like I will know these people until I die and I will make a concerted effort to know them. Uh, inner outer circle, th those are my homies, right? My homies, people I will meet outside of work, people I would meet outside of a uh, book club, people I would have lunch with, people I would talk to, people that I would do things with, people I would introduce to parts of my family maybe, people that um, I would invite into my home. You know, oh, well, that's a, well, if I had a crochet circle, I sure I, I would invite other strangers into my home probably too. Mm, caveat here, if you have a hobby like book club or crochet club, you might end up inviting people into your home that aren't in or outer circle. But in this example, for me, my homies, I'm trying to indicate like a level of intimacy, right? Now I could invite coworkers into my home and they could still be basically strangers to me. So again, don't, don't think, oh, Brittany said literally in her home. So that means, I mean more like in my home in a relaxed setting, not in my home for a work event, right? Those are different. So, okay. And then there's outer circle, which is like everyone else. So outer circle could be people in a crochet club, could be people at bowling, could be people at church, could be people who are coworkers, right? You know, those people you meet at work, they're amazing. You have laughs. Oh my God. I love Bridget from work, but you don't want to see Bridget outside of work. And like, sometimes Bridget's like, Hey, do you want to hang out with me outside of work? And you're like, Ooh, I really love having a work wife, work friend, work bestie, but I actually don't want to know you outside of work. I've had moments like that in my life, not moments I've always been proud of. I remember there was this one girl who I really liked at work and we had a great relationship at work. But for some reason, when we tried to become friends in real life, I didn't like it and I didn't know how to tell her that I didn't like it. She even started to say like, oh, you'll be Auntie Brittany to my kids. And I started to feel like this well of anxiety. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. And I was probably, I, I, gosh, 20, I don't know how old I was, 23, maybe 24. I'm not sure how old I was, maybe younger. And I just remember having like this ball of anxiety and I didn't know how to tell her I didn't want to be friends with her. And I did the worst thing you could ever do. This is before I formed my values. I ghosted her. You guys know I hate ghosting and I hate ghosting because I just think it's so cruel. And I just remember getting text messages from her like, hey, I hope we're okay. And if we're not, I just hope you would tell me. And I was like, 
And I used to pride myself in being so honest and forthcoming, but the truth was like, I wasn't. And that's why I think I added honesty and transparency to my values now. The reason I'm so anti-ghosting now is because I see how these things really hurt people. And since my whole shtick right now is consent and harm reduction, I wanna make sure my values reflect that. So now if somebody's like, hey, I noticed that we're not talking, is there a reason? Now I try to make a concerted effort to explain to people like, hey, yeah, I'd actually like to pull away from this relationship, which by the way, is very uncomfortable and it's very difficult and it's not easy, but I really, really, really prefer it to to ignoring somebody. I really do. So when you ask yourself like, how do you know what relationship you want with this person? Sometimes it's gonna be intuition, depending on how your brain and body works, depending on the relationship you have with your brain and body, you're going to have to ask yourself, and by brain, I could mean consciousness, but I could also mean brain, right? So for some people, they're more introverted, and then there's like their consciousness, which is like, I don't wanna make a concerted effort. And then there's like your body, like anxiety, intuition, gut reflexes, trauma. So make sure you separate yourself into whatever category you need to figure this out. But for Brittany, if I'm like, I have a lot of YouTube friends. I love having YouTube friends. So that's so fun. But just like Abba and I were talking on a call the other day, like Abba and I don't talk outside of work. He's never called me when I'm not on stream. Um, you know, he makes a concerted effort to be a good friend. He answers DMs. He's really, really lovely. I, I could vouch for Abba in terms of what I know about him. I would invite Abba into my home. He's not inner circle, but he's also not outer circle. He's inner outer circle. Somebody that would... I would love to introduce to my partner, somebody I would love to host here in Croatia, somebody that I would love to also work with and collab with, but I would also like to see him outside of work. But also our relationship hasn't yet happened sort of outside of work. We've met during a work a collaboration and we did do things outside of work together, but it it's not the same as inviting him into my home. Oh, hi, Indiana Jones. Did I leave the door open? I did not realize I left my door open. Hi. So sometimes you have a relationship that's going really, really well, but it hasn't really become closer. And I, in the past, would have been like, oh, that's weird. Isn't it supposed to become closer? Just like when you're dating a person and you get married, a lot of people put this pressure on you to be like, what now? Are you going to buy a house, have a baby? I think with friendships, you want to be like open to the idea that it's just what it is and maybe it won't get closer or maybe you just need more time to get closer or maybe you just want to be married for a while and not have a baby. Every relationship is going to be different. So when you're talking about friendship, okay, the reason I created a hierarchy was to create sort of an appropriate amount of boundaries. Look, I'm open. I don't mind getting closer to people, but I also have a lot of boundaries and I have very limited energy. So I want to be fair to the people in my life who are like, Brittany, I'd like more of your attention. You know, I just had a homie reach out, such a great person, could vouch for them. I've known them like a decade plus. I love them. And they wanted to brainstorm an idea with me uh, on a project they were working on. But to be honest, like I don't have any extra spoons to do that with people right now. I have to focus on what I'm doing, right? And I also don't have a lot of... um like spoons for anyone not in my direct inner circle because they have to be a priority. So I had to say, I'm so sorry. I just, I can't right now. And they were very understanding and I love them for that because like that's what I would love from a friendship is somebody who knows, you know, what we can offer each other and when we can do it. When I think of my inner circle, you know, if my sister called me and she was like, hey, I need to brainstorm something with you. I would be like, hey, you need to give me a couple days, but I'll get back to you. Or I'll say, how important is this brainstorm? Do I need to call you right now? And I will do that, right? Thank you. <laughs> my partner came and closed the door. So no more Indiana. But okay, so um, when you're having this conversation, like with my sister, I can, I can ask her that I can be like, I will make this time for you. You are inner circle, but do I need to do it right now? Or can I wait three days versus other people in my inner outer circle? Like I love my homies and they're so good and they are friends and I, and I adore them, but I might not have the spoons for them for another year. And I need them to be okay with that. Like one of my homies, we just had this conversation kind of recently where I was like, I wonder how long we'll know each other. And that's a really hard conversation for people to have normally. And they took it really, really well. And they had a great conversation with me over it. But I think I need to make it clear to people that unless you're in our circle, I assume at some point we will not know each other. And then the question is, at what point will we not know each other? Will it be in five months or 10 years or 50 years? Because at some point, you know, things happen in life. Like if communication goes out, I'll give you an example. If communication goes out across the world, zombie apocalypse, no electricity, I love my homies. 
I am not going to prioritize making sure I get contact with you. I'm going to make sure I get contact with my inner circle. Where's my family? Where are my besties? What are they doing? Are they okay? And I expect you to do the same. Out of respect to your family and friends and the people that showed up in your life in a way that is more profound than I have shown up, I expect you in a zombie apocalypse to go see those people, to prioritize those people. And then if you have time, you can come try to see where I am, you know? And same, like if I'm in your area and I'm like, oh, I'll see if so-and-so's around, that's different. But every time I think of ride or die, I don't think of who I'd go to prison for because if you love me, you will not put me in that situation. I think of who I will see in a zombie apocalypse. That's what I qualify as ride or die. Who would I go looking for in a zombie apocalypse, right? Because that's a big deal to risk my life, to go out of my way, to detour myself to people I love. And I'm going to risk a zombie apocalypse for my inner circle. But would I risk that for my homies? So when I think of anime and I think of like who's inner circle and who's not, sometimes you have the luxury like Sailor Moon or Goku to save everybody and everyone's important to you and everyone's your friend and that's beautiful. But I don't have that luxury. I have to pick and choose like who do I actually, who can I actually be there for and at what point, right? So, okay, I wanted to give an example of intimacy and friendship using like a sibling example. Now, not everybody has siblings, but I have nine of them. And one thing I noticed with my siblings is how diverse we are as people. Like we probably wouldn't have been friends if we weren't siblings. And I don't mean that in an offensive way. I mean, literally, where would we have met? Yes, a lot of us watch anime and a lot of us like have overlap, but none of us hang out in the same circles. Like I hang out on the part of YouTube that has like anime podcasts. None of my siblings watch anime podcasts. Okay, so that's, okay. I hang out on a Discord. Okay, well my brothers hang out on Discord, but they're in a gaming Discord with their other homies and they're not on public Discords like I am. Okay, so that doesn't work. I am not religious. So my brother who goes to church every day, well like when would I see him, right? It's not that we don't all watch anime, right? It's we all consume anime differently. So my brothers who love like, uh, you know, JJK and Dragon Ball Z, and we all watch those animes and talk about it with each other. Well, we talk about it with each other because we're siblings, but like they wouldn't be on the same forums I'm on talking about anime. You get what I'm saying? So it's about recognizing that the friends you have can fit into certain categories, but your siblings in particular, like for me, I have one of the most intimate and close relationships with my siblings. I feel like I could tell them everything about me, like literally everything about me. Some of my siblings and I, we tell each other like everything. And at the same time, I still wouldn't have been friends with them if we weren't siblings. And still, they're not even like my best friends. They are my favorite siblings. They're my closest siblings. Like I have three non-related best friends. They're my homies. They're inner circle. I love them. I want to know them till the day I die. I want to make an effort for them. I'm going to go hunt you down in a zombie apocalypse. And you know, I got you, right? And even those people I talk to, like some of them I haven't talked to in a month. Some of them I haven't talked to in six months. Some of them I have just caught up with again, which is so great because we're all so busy. But it's about would I come look for you in a zombie apocalypse? And the answer is yes. And then those friends, we became friends because we were in the same places. So I made those, those are my chosen family. I actually found them because they were where I was. And we met up because we were interested in the same things. So they are truly chosen family versus my biological family. They're family. And they were the family I got when I was born. Like they, I, I got them automatically. And it's only because we've made a concerted effort to stay close that we have. Look, ultimately, some siblings ter- like drift apart. Some people are strangers to their siblings and family. My family makes a concerted effort not to fall apart because it is so easy to do that, right? It's easy to hold grudges. It's easy to say, I was, I wish I was born into a different family. But for me, like, I really love all my siblings. I think all of them have beautiful traits about them, even the worst of them. I love them so much. And so I want to make an effort to say that I love you and I want you in my life and I want to know you till I die even if we get in fights, even if we stop talking for a while, even if it gets ugly, I want it to be beautiful again, right? Because I love these people as like a consciousness. Like I love these souls, if you will, right? Okay, now, oh my God, I need some tea. I just ranted and I did not take a break. Mm. Okay, so sibling versus friend. Okay, so once again, I have my siblings and we're all in like group chats and we share anime memes. And then my friends that I talk to about anime with different relationships, right? Now, okay, how do you know that somebody is in your life for a long time or a short time? So I can usually tell 
because I've had lots of friends, right? I have lots of friends now. I can usually tell sort of how long somebody might come into my life. And usually it's predicated on how much we have in common and how much we see each other, right? So when I have a friendship and we're vibing, we're like, oh my God, yes. Oh my God, yes. Like when they talk, my brain lights up. When I talk, their brain lights up. Like I know one of my <laughs> one of my homies. Oh, I love her. Oh my God. One of my homies, when we talk, it's like <laughs> like even if we don't always understand each other, which is not very often, I think we understand each other pretty well. But sometimes maybe there's parts of each other that we can't see because we come from different places. We talk through it and we talk about it and it's so exciting. Like I love having just time with her and catching up with her. And when we're talking, it's like my brain is like, like, I just feel like I'm lighting up, like I'm so excited and she's still not in her circle, right? And I'm not exactly her inner circle, but we're very close. Like, I think we both consider each other very close and we would love to know each other until the day we die. But we also know that life could take us in different directions. Something could happen in a zombie apocalypse. I know she has much closer friends and I expect her to prioritize them. And then I have my, you know, I think we respect each other so much and our boundaries that the way I think about our friendship is like, this feels like one of the most comfortable relationships I've ever had in my life. And I feel so safe with her and vice versa. Like we feel so comfortable with one another. And I think it's because she's so introspective that we can have really good boundaries while also knowing that this might be, you know, a friendship where I know her for 50 years and 60 years, but it's still, again, it's like, you know, the relationships you have have to be symbiotic. We have to be together in this. So your friendship is like a relationship romantically where you are looking at that person and negotiating a relationship with them. And then how smoothly the negotiation goes usually goes on how well you know each other. Like some people in my life, like some of my siblings, oh my God, I love them, but our negotiations don't always go smoothly because they can't see a lot of me. So they're very offended when I'm like, I have to put down boundaries with you. They're like, what do you, I'm your sibling. What do you mean you have to put down boundaries with me? And I was like, yeah, boundaries. And then some siblings see a lot of me. So they're like, I totally get it. It's, it's complicated, right? But it's really about how much I think people see you and understand you and how much you understand them. Because you have to value them as a consciousness, really see them and understand their perspective in a really profound way. And I think often in life, we think we know people. And we think we know even the people closest to us, but if you, but there's always like a feeling or a sign that they're not getting it. And it's usually when my brain, if my, if I feel like you're seeing me, I'm excited to talk to you. I want to tell you everything. If I'm closing up and I'm like moving away from you, it's because you're not seeing me and I don't feel safe anymore. So usually the way I tell how long a relationship will last is how much I get a feeling of wanting to open up and be like, yes, oh, this is safe. You understand me versus, um. Oh, no. So usually if I have a temporary, temporary friend, it's because we're bonding over something we do, maybe for a living, maybe a hobby. Maybe we really love JJK. We want to talk about JJK. And then, oh my God. But it's like temporary. I can tell we're not seeing each other except for the anime part. So it's not going to be very long lived. And then I can tell with other relationships like, oh, this is going to be a very long relationship, even if it never gets to inner circle, right? There's something really about how open or vulnerable I can feel. And then I practice radical acceptance of accepting whatever the relationship is going to be. In my past, I think as I was growing up, I had this like fantasy that all my friends would be friends with each other. But actually, nope, my friends are all friends with me and I'm friends with them, but none of my friends are usually friends with each other. And that's usually how it goes for me, generally speaking. And I don't mind that. Like as I've gotten older, I fully accepted it. And I kind of like being the friend that hops into every friend group. But it does cause some confusion when you're the friend who hops into every friend group because then they wonder, well, who's your core friend group? I don't really have like a friend group I've ever lived next to. Like I'm not, I don't, I've traveled, my friends have traveled. Even when I was living in the United States, I live in Croatia now, but when I was in the United States, my friends don't live in the same state as me. Some of my friends are on the East Coast, the um, Midwest, like uh, uh, like they're all over. So this idea that like I have a, a friend group that I'm always seeing every day is like, this is not an episode of How I Met Your Mother. This is not friends where we all live at the same bar, you know, or all go to the same bar every weekend. Like I don't, I haven't lived that life since my 20s. And those were all friends who basically ended up being temporary. In my 20s, I had this like adult friend group in San Diego, right? And I loved them. They were so great. Drama, but like, you know, great. Only one person from that whole group of people that I hung out with 
every weekend of my life for years ended up becoming inner circle and is still friends with me 12 years later. Right. And I love her and our friendship is great. Like it's awesome. But all of those people there, there was because we all loved friends and how I met your mother. And we had this hope that, yeah, we'd see each other every weekend for the rest of our lives. No. No. My story isn't that story. I love it when people have those stories. So then you have to ask yourself, which story are you living? Are you the trope or character like in the story that actually does live in the same neighborhood you grew up in? You die in that neighborhood and everyone you've known, you've known for 50, 40 years. Because that's beautiful, man. Everyone I know, I've known for 10 plus years, 20 plus years, 30 plus years, but we just don't live next to each other, right? So when you look at your life and your story, are you the person that travels and lives in a different country but still stays friends with everybody? Or are you the person that raises your kids with your friends' kids and you guys all raise kids together? Because that is like also something that I've always wanted to do is like, oh, well, I'll have kids and they'll all be friends. Not only are my friends not having kids, I'm not even, like I haven't even had a kid, right? I might not have kids. Like we're not even sure if we're all having kids, but we don't even live next to each other. So we're not even going to raise our kids together. What does that even mean, right? So again, as a child, we have this fantasy about what child, like what our friendship will be. So if you guys watch JJK and you know Gojo and Ghetto, you know that they have a friendship that was really, really strong and really beautiful. And as teens, they were friends, but because of ideology, they became sort of like not friends. I don't even want to say enemies, though they are on different sides. They can't even be enemies because they're inner circle. They're so intimately close together. It's hard to look at someone like that. Like if my brother or sibling ever decided to become, I don't know, like on the opposite side of me somehow in a war, it would be very strange for me to think I should hurt them. Even if they were the bad guy to me, I'd be like, mm, mm, I don't know about this. No. I couldn't hurt them maybe, but I could definitely like, you know, if they mass murdered somebody, I could call the cops very easily because, you know, values over loyalty. And then you have to ask yourself, what does it mean values over loyalty? It means like this, this complicated nuanced part of existence means I love you, but I still can't let you get away with this and I'm going to have to stop you. But I also won't be the one to kill you because I love you, right? It's this very complicated nuance. And sometimes that happens with friendships. But I think Ultimately, if you're like me, you have a lot of people in your past that you felt very close to at some point, and now you probably never think about them. Or you're still harboring some sort of connection to this past relationship, your best friend who was your best friend in high school, but at 19 years old, they betrayed you, and you're like, why? Let them go. Let them go. Take their pictures off your phone. You know, put it in a little box if you need to. Let them go. They are not the same person. The moment you guys had a betrayal, the moment there was this thing, there probably was a severance of the connection. Now, if you're in a circle, the connection can't be severed, but it also has to be symbiotic, right? I don't consider anyone my inner circle unless it's symbiotic, and it has to be, right? So if I have a friendship, and I had one, let's say with my cousin, you guys all know that story. My cousin, when I was really younger, did something very hurtful to me and broke off our friendship out of the blue, just like out of the blue. Started a rumor about me that wasn't true, got me kicked out of, I basically had to leave high school because I was being bullied by everyone because she spread this rumor about me. And I was like devastated. It was just awful. You know, years later, she denied it, claimed everyone was crazy. She never said that. But then we all knew, all the adults knew, like everyone, it, it was a big deal. Anyways, so- Middle Eastern family, we ignored her. It is what it is. We moved on with our lives. But I remember harboring so much anger, so much like disdain. I was like, we were best friends. We were supposed to be best friends for our whole life. What are you doing? And then one day I like stopped talking about her and stopped talking about her. And even now my siblings, we were reflecting on it. They're like, yeah, you haven't talked about her in years. Like you haven't harbored any anger towards her in years but there was a time in your life when you were so mad at her and I'm like yeah you know just one day it kind of like went away and it's not really one day it's just over time and I think that is sort of the indication I need of saying like this is an inner circle because the connection was severed I feel like truly even I have somebody in my inner circle now like (laughs) we haven't talked in a bit love him and the the kind of irony is like even though we haven't talked like he can't sever that bond and neither can I no matter how much he wants to pretend or I want to pretend like we can't no matter what until the day we die we will always know we're connected and we will always be thinking of each other and we'll always like be wondering what are they doing like what's going on and I hope one day we connect again right it's been a few years but it is one of those things where like I can't sever that connection 
I can't. And neither can he. It's symbiotic. We both agree, like, no matter how much we want to, we can't sever this connection. We've known each other our whole lives, right? So it is what it is. But for some people, whether you're siblings or cousins or spouses, there comes a point where you can sever the connection. And I think, again, it has to be symbiotic. This is very important. If it's a one-sided, unrequited love, unrequited friendship, it's not the forever connection. You know what I'm saying? If you can sever the connection, if you can grow apart, if you can move out of each other's lives, that's not inner circle. That's not kind of um, another word you could use is like soulmate for friendships. I think some people, you can use this word very loosely, is my, are my platonic soulmates or like people I will know forever, right? That's why you can see families who like their siblings become strangers to them, their parents become strangers, um, their wives, husbands become strangers. Like I'm pretty sure if my husband and I ever had to get a divorce because of abuse reasons, I'm pretty sure we couldn't sever this connection because he feels like a soulmate, like an inner circle. I'm, all my inner circle, all my chosen friends, like I can't sever this connection with them. I couldn't imagine a life where we grow apart. But all my homies that I love so much, all my friends that I love so much that are outside, that are the inner outer circle, I could imagine a day where, yeah, like where we grew apart or the the connection was severed be for good reasons because they had a baby and moved on because they got a dog and it took too much time or they, you know, I could see that and it, it would be normal. People come in and of our lives, like in and our, in our lives to leave our lives, right? Like people come in our lives to stay in our lives. People, like everyone has a different story. So the story is kind of the key here. Who are you in the story, Right. Okay, hold on. Oh, okay. So this is kind of key here. In order to have the kind of friendship structure that I have with people, it also lends to introspection. Most of the people in my life are very introspective or enough introspective to understand me. It would take a, an introspective level at least, a certain level of introspection at least, to see me enough to know that I am just setting boundaries with you and I'm not trying to like manipulate you or abuse you or trick you. Somebody needs to see me to know and be introspective enough to know when I say I love you and you're a homie, but I also know we could grow apart. I'm not judging you. I'm saying I'm allowing and radically accepting that you might need to move away from me. Versus if you're in inner circle and we can't sever that tie, it's like you can move away from me, but girl, I know you're never going to forget who I am. There are friends, there are women I have dated who I can't even remember their names. And I thought growing up, I would never forget the name of somebody I've dated or slept with or been with. Um, yep. Oops. Friends. I've had friends that were so close to me. I can't remember their names. I know their faces. I know their memories, but I cannot for the life of me remember their names. That is not inner circle. That is not ride or die. That is not a, that is not a soulmate. That is not, do you know what I'm saying? There are people I've met that were inner circle, like I've dated, that were very profound to me, who I'll never forget. And at the same time, I was able to sever the connection with them. And it's not a bad thing. Radically accepting that a relationship will end is accepting and and enjoying it for the moment it exists in. So you do need a certain level of introspection and extrospection to be able to have a healthy friendship and relationship, right? I think so much of friendship is so toxic because it's just like what you settle for. So many people settle for their friends. You ever feel alone in a group of friends? Why? And I've been there. It's awful. It's an awful feeling. You know, you want to connect, you're dying for someone to see you and they just can't. They're good people. They're wonderful people. They're caring and loving. Why can't they see me? Because you're settling even for your friends. Finding people you connect with who are meaningful to you, that is on a spectrum could be rare or common depending on how social you are, right? Like some of my friends are always struggling for friends. They're like, where are my next friends? Like, I want to spend more time with you, but you don't have the time. Where are my friends? Where are the people I'm going to hang out with all the time? And to be honest with you, like, I, I can't tell what people are looking for when they come to this point in struggle because I feel like it's easy for me to make friends because, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not that hard because all you have to do is find one thing in common, boom, friend, which is probably like Brittany's loose terminology around friends. I'm like, oh, we have something in common, friends. And then... Whether or not that means like close friends, well, that's different. I think that is kind of rare. In all of my life, only three non-related people have become inner circle. 
Well, four if you count my husband. But like, you know what I mean? Three have become friends that are inner circle. And then my homies, I mean, I'm going to be real. I like people. So I got hundreds of homies. I do. I have a lot of homies and they're great. And I love them all and they're wonderful. And I, I think I'll know them for a lot, a long time. But again, Brittany's standard is like, I just like people, but I also like my solitude. So it's confusing, right? I have lots of friends and very little time for them. <laughs> but I love them all because like, I just, when I meet someone I really like, I'm like, oh my gosh, cool. And again, it's people who like light up my brain and I light up theirs. And when we're talking, we're like, those friendships where we just, how could I not want that friendship in my life all the time? A friendship that gets us both talk. I have, oh my God. I have some people in my life that when we talk, it's like the conversation gets louder and louder and amplified. It's like the greatest feeling ever. For me, that's that's what I'm looking for. And I think when you're open and you radically accept people and you value people, it's not hard to find. But I think when you're bitter and closed off and you think you deserve something special and unique and perfect every time, well, yeah, you're not going to connect with a lot of people. I think when you're not, when you're looking for friends to fulfill you, instead of enjoying what they can do and what you can have in the moment, I do think you're less likely to have fulfilling friendships and relationships. So somebody had asked me like, what level of introspection do you need your friends to be? The level to which they can accept boundaries, see parts of me and I can see them and understand like appropriate behavior around the friendship. Oop, oh, this, my fibro legs. Okay. So it's, it's not like I need them to be you know, all fives, all level fives, it's I need them to be introspective enough to respect and understand boundaries. And that's really difficult to find, actually, because a lot of people, like I said, settle into friendships. They have one good moment with someone and they're like, we're so close. And I'm like, no. You don't know what closeness is if you think it takes a moment, right? It needs to be many moments over many times, over many months, years, weeks, depending on the friendship, right? Okay, hold on. Let me see. Okay, so, okay, how connected do you need to be? This coincides with what I just said. How connect, this is very important. How connected do you need to be to your friends? This is very key. So I'll give you an example. Every friendship gives me different energy. And like I said, if I find that my siblings and I or my friends and I are in a place from my inner circle to outer inner outer circle where we're not quite seeing each other as much because of the where we are in our path journey, then I just hit that friend up less, right? Like if I'm not like some some weeks, months, I'm like hitting up certain siblings more than other siblings. And it's because of where I'm at in my life. This is about you, remember? So the closeness you have with your friend is how connected you are is dependent on where you guys are in your like on your journey on your life, like just in your life in general, right? So I'm right now for the next two years, I'm in seven days a week, hustle mode. We're working every day and we are building, a, a, I'm building my my stuff up, right? That's what I'm doing. For the next two years, we're hustling kids, I'm streaming five days a week. I'm doing Discord events on the weekends. I am working seven days a week. I am taking calls. P.S. Welcome all the new callers and all the new Discord people. I'm so excited to see you here. And I am having so much fun. And that's me being present. That's me saying I have time for you. I'm giving time to my viewers. I'm giving time to my job, which means who gets less time? Ding, 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 ding. My homies, my friends, my siblings, my inner circle, they get less time. And I am making an effort to when they need me to be present for them. But ultimately, I'm giving all of my extra time to work right now because we have this like two-year plan, right? I'm taking the Asmon Gold approach, which is like hustle, 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 take a long break, hustle, 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 take a long break, hustle, 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 take a long break. And the hustle needs to last a certain amount of time, right? So I love that. I think that's really works for me. I feel like I won't burn out. And I also take time if I need it, you know? So... This means, again, that when my friends are like, hey, we want to meet up, we want to hang out, can you hang out? I'm like, ooh, so if I hang out with you for a week, that means I need a month of recovery, which means I won't be able to work seven days a week, which means I will burn out because now I'm doing this social thing over here. No. And they're like, wait, what? And I'm like, yeah, I just need like two years. That's two years. It's not very long. I just need like two years of not socializing. And then in their head, they're like, two years? But in some of my homies' heads, like, oh, yeah, two years, no problem. See you then. <laughs> it depends, right? Sometimes I'm happy to do the emotional labor for my friends to explain to them, like, I'm not rejecting you. But, like, also, like, my sibling wants to come. My sister wants to come. Um, 
what's it called? Be here in Croatia and visit. And she's going to take uh, time off work or she'll have time off work. And I'll have to think, okay, do I have to take time off work or no? And since my sister is such like a little introvert, it's going to be really easy for us to actually be able to work and have her here because she also needs a lot of alone time. So the good news is, is that while she's here, we should be able to work and still have her here so I don't lose my momentum for my my hustle. But also I get to hang out with my sister. See, like it's like, OK, how do I invite my sister into my space without taking off time for work? Well, like I said, the good news is she needs alone time. So it's perfect. Like we'll hang out during the day and at night I'll stream and it will be perfect. We'll hang out after the streams. It's just it's it's like I can work around my sister because my sister can work around me because our relationship is balanced by our personality types. If my sister was really needy and was like, hey, I need you to not work so you can spend time with me. I would have to say, hey, you can't come visit me yet. I'm not ready to take guests. You know what I mean? So our friendships, our relationships, our connections are also dictated on what we're doing in our life at the moment. They're not meant to reject people. They're meant to say, hey, I'm doing this right now. Often you'll hear single friends complain that their married friends don't want to spend as much time with them. To be fair, when I'm single, I'm a much different person. When I'm single, I can sleep with whoever I want to. When I'm in a relationship, I'm monogamous. So just like your friendships have to change, you have to change. When I'm single, Brittany, I can do a lot more with my friends. When I'm married, Brittany, my best friend is in the room next door to me. You know what I mean? Not that my friends aren't my best friends, but you know what I mean. Um, same thing. When my besties are working at their jobs and they're hustling, they don't talk to me for like three months at a time because they're like, I'm in, but we text. We text in Marco Polo all the time. Does that count? We're always texting and we're always sending each other memes and we're always active, but we're not like zooming. We're not like having a conversation because they're hustling and they're doing their job. And I'm with my person. Does that make sense? We're respecting where we are at the time we're we're living, the moment in time we are. It's about respecting people and dignifying their consciousness and saying, I love you and I respect your boundaries and I want you to do this thing. And I don't want you to feel bad that you can't be with me right now because I'm so proud of you for doing this thing. And also we've negotiated it and I've said, hey, like in three months we have to watch a movie together or like in three months we have to connect or in like, let's, do, and then they'll say, yeah, I can do that or no, I can't do that. Can we do it in four months? And I'll be like, yes. And then. Okay, so again, how connected, how introspective, how intimate, where do you place them? It's all about you. What do you need? What do you expect? Why do you need it? This is key. Why do you need friends? Why do you need anything from anybody? Oh, I'm lonely. Hire a sex worker. I need someone to talk to. Go on Reddit. Oh, I need... Actually figure out why you want connection. I want to be seen by someone. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense to me. Now, where do we find people who can see us? Well, we're probably going to start with compatibility. What is something I have in common with other people? Oh, I like philosophy. I'll go join a philosophy forum. Okay, we'll see who can see us, right? It's really exciting to meet somebody who like gets you. But they're not going to get you if you don't get yourself. And what's worse, if you don't learn who you are, you might meet somebody you connect with for the wrong reasons. You might form friendships that feel really safe and healthy and good, but are actually some of the most destructive, manipulative, horrible, abusive situations you'll be in because you didn't allow, like you allowed someone to see you better than you see yourself, but they're not even seeing you, homie. They're seeing a version of you that they have in their head of you. And that's also dangerous. Remember, this journey into intimate friendship could also be incredibly abusive and destructive. I've had friendships where I've had to put down boundaries where I'm like, no, no, hey, this is my job. I know what I'm doing. You can't tell me how to do my job. Or I've had friends who are like, hey, if um, you don't see me uh, or if you don't, no, no, if you don't tell me vulnerabilities of yours, if you don't say you love me. I don't see why we're friends. I've literally had people say that to me. And I'm like, what? I've had people put down like um, boundaries, quotation. This is like a very Jonah Hill boundaries. Like if you don't, you know, give me money, are you really a friend? And I'm like, that's not a boundary, dude. Like that's not a boundary. That's like basically an abuse tactic to convince your friends like you're not good if you don't give your friends money. I think it's up to you. Again, how you want to have friendship. But like even when it comes to money and me, like I don't give people money. 
like I give, I allow people to ask me for money, but I almost never give it. I don't even give it to some of my siblings. If I've given you money before and you've treated it badly and you've not paid me back, you don't get more money, girl, whether you're inner circle or outer circle. But for some people, again, money is very intimate. For some people, they think like, you're my friend. You should always give me money. Imagine if we went around being like, I need a thousand dollars. And if you're my friend, you'd give me money. Some people be out here trying to do that. Some people do not have your best interest in mind, even when they say you're, you know, you guys are best friends. Be careful about people who are so damaged and haven't gotten the right amount of therapy, introspection, meditation to do the work on themselves that they're manipulating you into a friendship. Be careful that you yourself aren't over promising to somebody because you want to be a good friend. And this is normal. You'll fuck up. It's okay. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. But ultimately, you have to know yourself in order to offer somebody what you can offer them without overpromising. Or you have to know yourself enough to admit you'll make mistakes and apologize and then do better. Friendship can be incredibly intimate. Watch an anime, you'll see. But ultimately, there is always a hierarchy of friendship because it's about priority of time. And ultimately, people who see you will do right, right by you because they want to dignify you and your consciousness. But if they can't see you, even your best friends, even the well-intentioned ones, even the good ones might sometimes make a mistake like your parents do and accidentally overstep boundaries. With love, remind them that you're good to go. But like, okay, because sometimes friends, there are, it's a certain category of friendship. I knew this guy in Seattle where he would say things like, I'm going to build a life with my friends. And I'm like, no, you're not, dude. There's no way. Your wife is going to take over. You're going to focus on her and your life and your baby and your family and your parents. You're not going to build a life with your friends. You're going to live in a place where you never leave. So your friends and you grow old together, but you're not going to actually build a life with your friends. And then some people claim to do this, but I've never seen it actually happen where you actually invest money with friends and live on an island with friends and have a cult with like, what are you going to have a cult? Again, the fantasy of friendship can sometimes force you to miss opportunities of really good and meaningful friendships. So don't get so distracted by the fantasy of like, we're going to live our life together versus like, yeah, we're going to live in a similar neighborhood and kind of know each other as we get older. And that's really great and profound. But also like, are you sharing bank accounts with your friends? And if you're going into business with your friends, get a contract because money destroys friendships. Because people become very human, right? Anyways, you can do it your way. Leave it a comment in the sections down below to tell me how you guys do it. But ultimately, like, what is friendship? It's a relationship. It is a real relationship. And depending on how intimate you want to be in that relationship, it really comes down to who you are. Your boundaries, your values, your morals, how you see the world. I just saw a TikTok the other day that was like, who keeps saying we can be friends with people that are politically different from us? That is insane. For me, that's not insane. But for you, it might be. Now, I have a limit even myself. I have friends that think differently from me politically, but it is a very hard part of our friendship. I'll admit it. The friends who, who think very differently from me when it comes to civil rights or politics or anything else, or even philosophy, it is a very hard part of our friendship. But the consciousness that they are is worth that hardship. And it's worth those uncomfortable conversations. It's worth looking at your friends like, are we going to be on opposite sides of the Civil War? You know what I mean? It's, 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 it's truly difficult. But the good news is that, you know, if you know your limit, you can have boundaries with friends. And you can have interesting and nuanced friendships with people who are different from you. You don't have to. Like I said, even I have my limit. There are certain kinds of people I don't have in my life, period. Okay, ever. But, you know, I have some interesting humans in my life. Let's just say that. Okay, with that said, this is all I have to say on this. I really want your feedback because I'm dying to know what other things I could have missed on friendship, what other things came to mind as I was talking. Um, I would love to know. Oh, and P.S., one other form of friendship that I think is super toxic and you should go to therapy for is the guys who are like, I would never tell my partner this, but I tell my boys this, like the red pill bubble. Don't do this. That's weird. That's super toxic for you to prioritize your friends over your partners. That's super weird and I don't trust it. And I think it's super red flag. 
for you to like, no, I understand prioritizing your partner because you're supposed to be doing life with them. You're having babies with them. You're making a legacy with them. Like, what are you doing with your friends? And if you are doing that with your friends, you should marry the homies because it would it'd be more fair. Anyways, that's my last, that's I just, anyway, so many things you could say about friendship. With that said, I'm going to go ahead and go. Thank you for watching. Have the most fantastic day and I will see you guys next week. Bye. In my head, in real life while I'm dead My belly's being fed and I'm okay I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm Sick of reaching out for the truth and living life as a fool.